Hello and welcome to module 16 in our C language series. This module is going to focus on sorting and searching. In today's session, we're going to discuss simple sorts, right, before moving on to advanced sorts in later sessions. Just an introduction. There are three general methods for sorting arrays. These are the exchange method, the selection method, and the insertion method. Talking about each of these in the context of arranging a deck of cards in order, Using the exchange sort, we would spread cards on a table face up and then exchange the out of order cards until the deck is ordered. Talking about the selection sort in the context of the same set of cards, we would spread the cards on the table and then pick out the card of lowest value, separate that from the pack or the deck, and then go back to the deck and select the card with the next lowest value and place that behind the one we already separated earlier. This process will continue until all cards are in order. Talking about the insertion sort, what we will do is we will hold all cards in our hands and then place the cards one at a time on the table, every time inserting them in the correct position. Right, so each card will always be placed before a card on the table or after a card on the table. The deck will be sorted when you have no cards in your hands and all cards nicely sorted on the table. So that's the insertion sort. Now, how do we judge the performance of sorting algorithms? As you can imagine, these methods have got different algorithms that can be used. And there are certain criteria we can use to judge a sorting algorithm. So, how fast can the algorithm sort information in an average case is one such criteria. What constitutes an average case? So say for example, the data you receive for sorting is not perfectly in order. Neither is it absolutely out of order. Right, so then how fast can the algorithm produce sorted data? How fast are its best and worst cases? So best case scenario would be data received for sorting is already sorted. So how fast does the algorithm produce sorted data then? And worst case scenario would be data is in inverse order of the order that we want it sorted in. So for example, you want the data sorted in ascending order, but the data that is received for sorting is in descending order. Does it exhibit natural or unnatural behavior? What's the meaning of natural or unnatural behavior? We come to shortly. Does it rearrange elements with equal keys? So what does this mean? So if for example, we have a mailing list and the mailing list is, let's say sorted first by the primary key, which is let's say zip code. And then within that it is sorted by Lastly, right, now when a new address comes in to be added to the mailing list, of course a resorting will have to be done. But the algorithm should ensure that if there are addresses being added that have the same zip code values, that those are not then sorted according to the sub key or the last name. Right? They should not be rearranged because then the data will no longer be in the order of zip code. Right? So we need to take care of that. Speed of the sort. How do we determine the speed of a sort? We determine first of all the number of comparisons and the number of exchanges. But what constitutes a comparison? When does a comparison occur? So say for example we have four elements then a comparison would occur when we are comparing D versus A or A versus C, C versus B, etc. All those are comparisons. So how many of these comparisons will have to occur for the data to be sorted? Similarly, how many exchanges need to happen? Right? When does an exchange happen? Let's say, for example, we take the same elements and now if you're sorting in alphabetical order, then the position occupied by A 
should be occupied by D and the position occupied by D should be occupied by A, right? So we need to do a swap there. And that's an exchange. So how many again of these exchanges will need to happen or occur for the data to be sorted? What about best and worst cases? So how do we determine performance in the best case scenario and the worst case scenario? We determine how many comparisons happen in the best case scenario, that is when data is fully sorted, and how many exchanges occur in the best case scenario, and we do the same for the worst case scenario. And this is particularly important if one of these will be encountered frequently. What about natural behavior? When does a sort exhibit natural behavior? When it works least if the list is already in order, when it works harder as a list becomes less ordered and it has to work the hardest when the list is in inverse order or totally disordered, right? So now let's talk about the bubble sort and we're going to write code for this. But before that, let's understand how it works. First of all, the bubble sort is the most well-known sort, but is also the most infamous. I'll come to the, uh, I'll come to why it is infamous shortly. How does it work? That's important. So if we have four elements in the array, what it does is it will check adjacent elements. So D versus C, A versus B, etc. Right? So let's go ahead now and write some code for the bubble sort. Start a new file. And hashtag include stdio.h. And then hashtag include stdlib.h and hashtag include string.h okay and then we have to declare a function let's call that bub sort and it's going to take two arguments char star item and int count right now our main function and here we'll have char str equal to dcab and we want these sorted in alphabetical order int counter equal to str len of str and then we call the function sending in the arguments str and str and then we'll print the sorted string exit exit success right now that we're finished with mean we can define bub sort and the parameters here, car star item and int count. We need some variables, int a, comma b, and we'll keep com to count the number of comparisons. Car temp, right? And now for a equal to 1, so A has the index of the second element, that is C, right? A less than count. And plus plus A. Okay. And then we have another loop for B equal to count minus 1. So this is starting from the end of the string or the end of the array. Condition will be B greater than or equal to A. And then B minus minus. And within this inner loop, we will check if item of B minus 1. Right, so the first time that will be. Count minus 1 will be 3 because we have 4 elements. 
and we are saying b minus 1 so that's 2 right so if item of 2 which in essence is a right is greater than item of b which is 3 right so if a is greater than b then we say temp equal to item of b minus 1 we're doing the swap now item of b minus 1 equal to item of b and item of b equal to temp okay so for the first time as i said b is equal to count minus 1 which is 4 minus 1 so 3 if item of b minus 1 that is now 3 minus 1 so item of 2 which is a is greater than item of 3 so that's not the case so of course the swap will not execute right comp plus plus to keep track of the comparisons and you can print here the status of the string so printf comparison this will be the comparison number and then percentage s backslash n right comma comp comma item so the first time this should be the same right and so this will continue until we have the data sorted so let's run this now i think there's a spelling mistake here so we we'll get an error there let's run this and you can see the first comparison is the same and then it keeps changing so you can see that this is bubbling up slowly to the top right and then b is bubbling up slowly to the top right therefore the name bubble sort okay so i hope that's clear now one thing if you notice and let me run that again there was something i forgot to mention to you you can see the number of comparisons is six so keep that in mind right now let's move on points to remember with regard to the bubble sort it always performs half of n squared minus n comparisons now remember i said the number of comparisons was six keep that in mind so if we say half and we apply the formula to the number of items we have n being the number of items so that would be or the number of elements that would be 4 squared minus 4 right that's 16 minus 4 so that's 12 half of 12 is 6 and you can put any number of elements you can try that after the session and apply the formula and you will get the exact number of comparisons very ineffective when applied to a large number of elements here's an example so let's say we assume that each comparison takes 0 0.001 seconds then sorting 10 elements and applying the formula half n squared minus n and then of course multiplying by 0 0.001 sorting of 10 elements will take 0 0.05 seconds sorting of 100 will take 5 seconds sorting 1000 will take 500 seconds sorting 100,000 will take 5 million seconds which in effect is 1,400 hours and if you do the math that's two months right so it's not effective at all can be slightly improved through a version called the shaker sort or the cocktail shaker sort so what is this sort in this particular sorting method what we will do is we will have one iteration which has our counter moving forward and then we'll have another one moving backwards therefore it's called the cocktail shaker sort right so you'll have two iterations happening for every pass as it is called okay so 
we're going to go ahead now and write the code and then it will become clearer to you so file new hashtag include stdio.h and then hashtag include stdlib.h and hashtag include string.h then we have a function void shaker sort passing in char star item comma int out and the main function char str equal to dcap again we are sorting in alphabetical order int counter equal to str len of str then we call the function passing in the arguments str and counter printf sorted comma str and then of course exit with exit success now we'll define our function parameters char star item and int count we need some variables int a comma b and we are going to have a boolean type exchange okay so we have to include your hashtag include std bool dot h we have a char temp to help us with the sort and int pass as well which we can put here so comma pass we can have comp as well right you can see here pass equal to zero and comp equal to zero now we use a do while loop here so do and here we'll say exchange equal to zero so every time this loop executes exchange becomes zero or false for a equal to one a less than count so this is moving forward as you can see plus plus a and within this loop we we'll check if item of a minus one for the first time that will be zero is greater than item of a right so if item at the zeroth position is greater than item at the first position then we do a swap so temp equal to item of a minus one right and item of a minus one equal to item of a item of a equal to ten right we also have exchange get the value true or one right then this is the end of the for after that we'll have another for loop so for a equal to count minus one so now we are moving in the opposite direction a greater than zero minus minus a and within this loop we check if item 
of a minus 1 greater than item of a then again we do a swap so temp equal to item of a minus 1 and item of a minus 1 equal to item of a right and item of a equal to temp and of course exchange equal to 1 right now after this right after that for loop we'll have pass plus plus and then printf okay, so we see the status of item after each pass right that is after both these for loops okay and here we'll say while the condition of exchange being true right and that of course ends our function okay so now we run this you see the first time we have a c b d our original string was or our original array was d c a b so a c b d then a b c d and the third is a b c d and it's sorted right so the number of passes are the same if you compare to the bubble sort so if i put in a pass here before the the outer loop is performed that is we can see here pass plus plus we we'll have to put in a variable there and we can see here printf right so now if we run this you see the passes are three right so number of passes are the same for both of these now coming to sorting by selection selects element with lowest value exchanges it with first element from the remaining n minus one elements the element with smallest value is found and exchange with the second element exchanges continue until the last two elements right so now we can go ahead and write code but remember the selection sort also requires half n squared minus n comparisons okay just like the bubble sort so let's now go and start a new file so that we can write the code for the selection sort So here, hashtag include stdio.h and then hashtag include stdlib.h and hashtag include string.h and again we will use a boolean type so std bool.h okay. and then void select sort star star arr comma int counter okay now int main and here we say char item equal to bdac again sorting in alphabetical order int counter equal to str len of item and then call the function select sort with item and counter as arguments and then printf sorted 
comma item exit with exit success now we have void select sort and we have car star err and int counter variables int a equal to zero b equal to zero pass equal to zero comp equal to zero and we also need temp index right remember this involves finding the minimum value or the minimum or the element with the minimum value right bool exchange and car min now we have our loop so for a equal to zero a less than counter minus one that's the index of the last element in the array a plus plus and we'll have within this loop temp index equal to counter okay and exchange should be initialized to false so zero and min will be equal to r of a remember a is zero so the first element is taken as a minimum value right then we have another loop here for b equal to a plus one b less than counter b plus plus okay and within this loop we'll say if arr of b is less than minimum then we need to now keep track of that new minimum index so temp index equal to b right and change the value of min to r of b because that's the new minimum and change exchange to having the value true so equal to one right then we see here comp plus plus and printf then after this we check if exchange is true then arr of temp index right equal to arr of a right and arr of a is equal to min I hope you understood what we are doing here. We are essentially swapping. So this will be the lowest value and it will move to the zeroth position. Right? Then we see here pass plus plus and printf. Right? And of course, that's the end. That's the end of our four, and this is the end of our function. Okay, so let's run this now. Let's see now. Car. Okay, so. Ah, this should be percentage S, right? Not percentage D. and you can see here we have six comparisons and three passes again 
right? And of course, we have the sorted data. And you can see how this works, right? Where in the minimum value moves to the top, right? Then the next minimum value moves second, then the third minimum, and so on, right? So that's how the selection sort works. Moving on now to sorting by insertion. Initially sort the first two elements of the array, insert the third element into its sorted position, insert the fourth element into the list of three elements. Continue until all elements are sorted. Right, so for this one, it will be something like this. Let's say I have four elements. So it will first sort the first two elements, that D and C. So place those. Then it will take A and see that it needs to come before C. So that will be placed accordingly. Now B needs to come between A and C. And so it will insert it there. Right, so let's go and write the code for this one. And hashtag include stdr.h and hashtag include stdlib.h and then hashtag include string.h void insertion sort sending in char star r item and count. Now the main function and here we say char items equal to dcab int counter equal to str len of items. And then call the function insertion sort using arguments, items, and counter. And then printf. We need to exit. Now the function void insertion sort. And we are passing in parameters char star r item and int count. And here we'll have some variables int a comma b equal to one pass equal to zero com equal to zero and char ten. And now we have our loop for a equal to 1, a less than count, a plus plus. And within this loop, remember for this one, we need to keep track of the left and the right. What I mean is the left element and the right element. So what we're going to do is we're going to say here temp equal to r item of a okay so that will be the second element and then we'll have for b equal to a minus one now so that's b equal to zero and right? because a is one and then temp less than our item of B and there's two conditions and B greater than or equal to zero right and then B minus minus so we needed to include the second condition because there's a chance that B becomes negative one right and within this we will say here our item of 
b plus 1 equal to r item of b. Okay. And then you can print f r item at this point just to see what it is. So we just do that just for your reference print f. After this, we'll have your r item of b plus 1 equal to temp. And you can print that again just so that you understand how this code is working. Of course, you can always write your own algorithm. So now if I run this, okay, there is some semicolon missing there. So you see now how this works. We have our item printing as D, D, A, B. So what has happened here? B is A minus 1. Right? So B is 0. And then we are saying 0 plus 1 equal to our item of B. So that becomes D again. Right? Okay. And... Then, of course, we are going back into this loop where B becomes negative 1. Right? Because remember, it was 0 here. Yeah? So, negative 1 brings it here. Our item of negative 1 plus 1. So, our item of 0 equal to temp. Temp, remember, had our item of A. Right? Which was 1. So, it had C. Right, so you see how this works. So it's now become CDDB. And you can go through this on your own. I'm sure you'll understand it then. Right, so that's about the insertion sort. Right, so you see everywhere how this is being inserted in place. This finishes our session for today. In the next session, we'll be talking about advanced sorts. Right, so till then, take care. Stay safe. Bye.